up? It's Kelly Mo here. I'm just doing some new videos for a caregiving project and they're called Kelly Cares Packages. And I wanted to share some tips that I've acquired over the past decade in regards to giving care for loved ones. My mother was diagnosed with severe dementia over a decade ago um, in her mid-60s. She just turned 78 a couple months ago. And this journey of becoming a caregiver and a power of attorney and essentially um, doing a role reversal, becoming the mother figure to my mom, has really altered my life in many, many ways. Um, my friends who know me or people who I've worked with um, are very familiar with everything that I've gone through. And when I have shared stories, I think a lot of people have confided in me about, you know, similar situations that they're going through. Um, they're in the beginning stages of learning about a loved one who is showing signs of being sick, whether it is Alzheimer's or, you know, any other kind of illness. Um, it's devastating. And I have been riding this roller coaster for a very long time. And I just thought maybe I would put some thoughts and tips down through this video medium and share some stuff with you guys in a few different um, packages. So this package, I thought that I can talk about how everything started for me in the beginning and just give some advice on what tips could possibly help you or friends or loved ones that you're aware of who are experiencing changes in their loved ones' lives. So for me, when I started seeing odd behavior coming from my mom, you know, it startled me, obviously, and in talking about it with my siblings and other family members, you know, just trying to communicate with them things that I've learned or what I've seen or I've observed, as well as, you know, asking them if they had seen anything as well, too, just kind of comparing notes. Um, you know, I was very proactive and went to the Alzheimer's Association that was closest to me at the time I was living in New York City. So I went to the chapter um, that was in Manhattan and they are a great resource, obviously. They provide um, free workshops and seminars for people who are going to, you know, become caregivers as well as people who are early in their diagnosis. It was you know, the best and smartest thing I had done at the time, because, you know, a lot of times when these things happen, people retreat, they really don't know where to go, what to do. Um, they're in denial. Taking advantage of the Alzheimer's Association was the best foundation that I could get at the time um, to get educated and prepare myself for what was to come. And even though every individual case is unique, and everything that I learned in that um, seminar was not necessarily for me. There were plenty of tips that I learned that were very helpful that I could put into practice quickly and um, as well as share them with my other family members. So I would you know, definitely recommend from Jump. Um, when you start seeing signs, well, obviously you're having a conversation with your loved one about what you're witnessing because they're very aware of what's going on with them. They're scared. They're fearful. They don't want to let on any sign whatsoever if anything's wrong with them. Who, who wants that? And especially people who are older, they know that they're getting older, <laughs> So they're probably already confused. Is it just, you know, a sign of the times, you know, of, of, am I older and this is what's happening to me or is something more serious happening? You know, trying to encourage your loved one to go to the doctor is not always the easiest thing to do, um, but it's pertinent that you make that happen one way or another. Um, if anything, for the simple matter of fact that that person, that doctor is a third party who's insight and information will be more well received from your loved one than hearing from, you know, their child, the, the sister who has been saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. If a doctor says it, um, at least in our case, the whole issue was I wanted my mom to relinquish the keys to the car. 
And for those of you out there who have experienced this or are about to have the experience of having to talk to their loved one about giving up their independence to do certain things like drive a car, um, cook, um, do other, you know, daily things that aren't really safe for them anymore. They usually don't want to listen to someone that they're close to tell them they can't do something. But when a professional is in the mix and shares their advice and their recommendations, one, the person who is dealing with the issue will maybe be a little bit more prone to listen. And two, it's ammunition for folks like me who could go back to my mother and say, well, mommy, you know, the doctor said, you know, you shouldn't be doing that anymore. And this is the reason why. It's not just me coming to you, making you feel as though I'm trying to nag you or take your independence away. So doctor's appointment, very important. See what's going on. Make sure um, you are getting the proper meds. Uh, medicine and, you know, pre- preventative care is the most important thing from, you know, the, the very beginning. And after you have that initial physical medical consultation, then the other discussions eventually have to come into play. Uh, finances. You know, one of the things I was learning very quickly, one of the signs, you know, that I was seeing, you know, with my mom is, you know, her bills weren't being paid. And I could tell from the household how certain things weren't being tended to. And having to have those difficult conversations and saying, okay, you know, are you paying your bills on time? How are your finances? What's going on? That's what actually led for me to end up becoming power of attorney for my mother. And I'm the youngest of three siblings. And um, it fell on my shoulders to do uh, this um, power of attorney is probably the silliest term I've ever heard because there's no power in it. I think it's, you know, it's a daunting task. I don't feel powerful at all having to have taken this into my, into my world, but it was necessary for somebody to do it. And um, I took it on. And the next decision we had to come up with was in regards to my mom's safety. So housing, where is she going to live? Who's going to live with her? Based on what was going on in my world, my brother's world, we unfortunately, you know, had to make the hard decision that we were going to have to move my mother to an assisted living facility. And that was one of the hardest decisions I know that I've ever had to make because we weren't raised. I mean, most people I know are not raised to think that they're ever going to have to move their loved one outside of the home into a nursing home or an assisted living facility. When I was a little girl, when my grandparents um, were sick or when my great aunt was sick, they came and they lived with us. And that's just, you know, what we did, quote unquote, back in the day. You know, unfortunately nowadays, so many families don't live close to each other. People are spread out all over the country or all over the world. So it makes it more challenging. And also in regards to um, our livelihoods and making sure that, you know, my mother got the best care on an assisted living facility, her and, um, you know, it was the hardest decision. And the first day of, you know, moving her in and trying to get her settled and, making her feel as comfortable as possible. We've already gone through this really traumatic experience of having to downsize her entire life into a one-bedroom apartment situation and making it as homey as possible and, you know, getting her acclimated and adjusted to living with strangers. You know, you have a whole staff of people that you're unfamiliar with. You have new neighbors, you know, a group of residents that live in this facility that you now have to interface with every day. It's it's life-changing. Leaving her on that first night was one of the hardest things. 
I've ever experienced. You know, you're walking away and leaving your mother behind um, in a strange place. It was horrible. And um, it saddens me to this day. And um, But, you know, that happened over a decade ago. And, um, you know, it was necessary. And so basically, um, and just in recapping <laughs> with everything that I've kind of just gone through, just the important steps when you first see signs that are going on with your loved one. You know, be proactive. Make sure um, you get them to the doctor and, you know, be, have informed decisions based on this doctor's visit to know exactly what your next step should be. And once you have that information, um, get them the preventative care or get them on the medicine that they need is first and foremost. Then you'll be able to start educating yourself on this new situation that you're dealing with, your soon to be new normal, and talking with people, getting support, um, going and finding resources in your community that will help you. Um, like, like I said before, for me, it was Alzheimer's Association, and then also you can find out if there's support groups, um, especially with the new living facility where my mom was, I'm talking with a social worker and seeing if they have support groups within that community or if there are other places where you can go, it's all about community. You can't do this on your own and never be afraid to speak on it, ask for help, ask for suggestions. And in doing that as well, you know, the legal advice that I got based on the fact of becoming a power of attorney was helpful. Um, and then making sure you're getting advice in regards to finances um, is extremely important. And then the last thing would be just making sure that your loved one is safe. So that made us, you know, make the decision to move, you know, our mother into an assisted living facility. So I'm really hoping that, you know, some of the things that I've shared have um, been helpful. And um, if you have any comments or thoughts or suggestions, please feel free to share them with me. That would be lovely. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to move forward with some more um, care packages um, in the future. And maybe I'll be talking about um, the best practices for self-care, um, you know, good practices for communicating with your loved ones and your friends in regards to what's going on with you, um, the staff at the facilities. Um, you know, hopefully I'll also be able to share some other insights in regards to some other financial responsibilities that I've had to undertake and, you know, hopefully um, you won't have to undertake them, but, you know, knowing how this game is with caregiving and care providing, um, the financial situation is probably still going to be front and center and very important for you to be aware of. So I hope that, you know, what I've shared thus far in this very first video was helpful and I hope that you and your loved one are well, and um, I wish you the best in your process, and um, I'll be talking to you soon. So thanks so much for, for listening. Okay, take care.